Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This is kind of a special edition because we have some very special cars from the General Motors Heritage Center. Uh, we're talking about Corvettes today. And this, of course, the very first Corvette, the 53. We're here with Ed Welburn. He's the Vice President of Design at General Motors. Ed, come on over here. Yeah. How you doing? Thanks. Ed really brought good. these by here. <laughs> so this is really cool. I wish you could leave them. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're pretty cool cars. Well, Very special cars. Well, take us through. Of course, the iconic 50. How, how many did they build in 53? Not many. Huh? It wasn't many. It was less, you know, the production run 53 was less than 1,000. Okay, and yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing how fast they moved from. They showed the very first car at the Waldorf in right. January, and by, I think it was like summer, they were in production. Yeah, and I remember, I don't remember at the time, but I remember briefly after people going, a car made out of plastic, ooh, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's a what, what, yeah. you know, that kind of, I there know. were a few fiberglass cars around. I think this was the first production fiberglass car. Yeah. Was, there had been a few kit cars or low production, but this was the first, at least by a major manufacturer. Yeah, and at the time they're like the California custom guys were doing right. one-offs or they built a few of the yeah. fiber fat kind of things. And yeah. And they built a few of them, but this is the first real production. Now, were they all automatics, or did they make a standard shift? That I'm not sure. I'm not I think sure the first either. year was automatic. I think, I think there was that, and then the that stick two-speed power yeah. glide that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like. And kind of, it was the inline six. Yeah, the blue well. flame yeah, six. The blue flame. Yeah, but it had yeah. multi carburation on it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Now, as bad as that sounds, now that was not that unusual. The six-cylinder engine was still, the V8 was kind of new. The yeah, late 40s yeah. and early 50s. So Hudson still had a six and they were winning races. Yeah. So a six cylinder didn't have the same connotation in a Corvette yeah. that it would, yeah. it would have now. It's just one that coupled to a two speed power yeah, glide. Yeah, coupled you know, to a two speed power glide. Solid rear axle and yeah, all of that. Yeah. And, you know. and this cost car did not have roll up windows. Right. Uh, but it, it, I don't know, was it a personal luxury car or was it a sport? I guess it was a sports car. It was car. a sports car. Yeah. Harley Earl was inspired. He went to Watkins Glen, right. as legend says, and he, he saw the sports cars racing there, and he came back and immediately wanted to start this project. Yeah. Quickly. Can we open the hood? Let's open the hood. Careful. Yeah. It's actually a pretty interesting engine. Wow, look at that. Three yeah. carburetors. I'm not familiar with those air cleaners. I guess that's what they came with, I guess, huh? Yeah, that was it with okay. the uh, Carter carburetors. Yeah, and what was the horsepower on this? About 130, something like that, uh, probably? 130, 145, somewhere yeah, in yeah. that range. Yeah, move it yeah. along a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it was, a, uh, it was a good car. They didn't sell very well the first yeah. couple of years. In fact, they are in danger of it actually going out of production, but by uh, 56, 55, excuse me, when the V8 became available. That, right. that made all the difference in the world. And then Ford came out with their Thunderbird, and the Ford actually outsold the Corvette initially yeah. because the Ford was like a personal luxury car. It had air conditioning, and it wasn't really a sports car as a, a cruiser, which is what yeah. Americans like, yeah. whereas Corvette was building sports cars. But then, of course, once the V8 came along, the whole thing sort of changed. But it's still a great-looking car, and uh, you know, it's fun to see all the classic Corvette styling touches that exist to, to this day. I mean, this feature here went right, right up until the 60s, which was really only 10 years And then years actually, later. actually, we, we brought it back in a new way in right. more recent ones. But, you know, in some ways, I like this car better today yeah. than I did maybe 15, 20 years right, ago. Right, right, There's something yeah. about it that just is very pure and very clean. Yeah, sometimes design has to age, you know. Yeah. You let it just sort of sit. And to me, the first year of anything is usually the best looking year. Right. And they've never built a better Mustang than the 64 in terms of style to me. Very clean design. Yeah, very clean start design. To put all the stuff and this over. is a very clean design. Yeah. You know, the, the, the chrome is not put on with a trowel like it is on a lot of. Uh, no, and when you think 50s about cars. the 50s, yeah. early 50s are very clean, and then they just started adding stuff. And adding yeah, stuff. yeah. And of course, the, the tail lights inspired by the fighter jets. And, yeah. And the back end is really cool. Look at the back it end is. with the license plate under glass. Yeah. And uh, the famous Harley Earl loved the exhaust coming through the body. Coming through the yeah, body. that was, that was yeah. really something kind of special, too. You know, the thing that surprises me, though, this was a pet project with Harley Earls. I don't think he could fit in the car. Yeah, probably not. He's a not. big man. He's I don't a big know guy. How he could fit in this car. Yeah, yeah. And little half wheel here like that. Yeah, yeah. 
and all the gauges kind of spread out across the whole. Yeah, and it's interesting how this got bigger in later years. Yeah, yeah. This whole piece, but of course, you remember the 55, 56 Chevy? Yeah. That's yeah. the classic styling cue yeah. right there. And as you see, when we move to some of the later cars, the gauge has gradually moved over right. to a whole cluster. I love cluster the tack right, right where it's completely useless, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the tack, you've already hit something <laughs> over there. But very nice in the stitching, very, very nice. And yeah. beautifully done, yeah. beautifully done. You got the bias ply tires and the hubcats. Let's yeah. move over to this, the 58. Yeah, by 58, the car started to get a little larger. Yeah. First year for four headlamps, suspension changes. It got right. more sophisticated with the rear suspension. And this is a dual quad car. Yeah. This is a 283 yeah. with two four barrel carburetors, yeah. right. four speed transmission, uh, big drum brakes on it, optional hard top, yeah. roll up windows. It was, you could use them as a, as a regular car. And of course, uh, I guess 57 was the first year of the fuel injection. Yeah, 57, yeah. first year for fuel injection. They actually offered, by 58, they had two different fuel injection engines and yeah. two different dual quad engines and a single four barrel. But it's amazing lot, all yeah. the engine options they had. But a lot of people didn't trust fuel injection. It was kind of foreign. Yeah. You know, yeah. four barrel yeah. carburetors are pretty yeah. easy to understand. So a lot of people opted for the two four barrels because that, that, that early Rochester unit was, was tricky for the home mechanic to. Yeah, uh, in fact, yeah, I think they sold more of the four barrel cars than they did of yeah, the, car, yeah. uh, the fuel injection. And of course, a lot of chrome as was the yeah. as was the deal back in the I 50s. I mean, that was the period. Yeah. This almost looks like somebody added it on, but that's the way they came. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course it had a trunk and uh, I love the badge. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. Once again, the exhaust coming through the bumpers like that. Yeah. Uh, and certainly the dashboard cleaned up nicely. I always love this grab rail here. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. really inspired, very clever. But uh, yeah, by 58, it really gone to the dual cockpit design with the instrument panel. All the gauges had moved over in right. front of the driver, kind of makes sense. You right. know? <laughs> and uh, an easier car to drive. There you go, okay. That's a 283 with two four barrels, and look at the size of that generator. Enormous. Yeah. And what was the horsepower on this? About 270, I think it was, for the... Uh, 270, 275. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Close yeah. to one horsepower per quarter yeah. inch. Yeah. Per cubic inch, rather, I mean. Yeah, very nice. The fan shroud, the whole deal. Nicely done. Chrome under the hood of the car. You don't see that anymore. And this is, there's something special about this car. We're going to show you what it is in just a few minutes, but uh, one of you could have the chance to own this very car. Now, this is the boss's car, isn't it? This is Dan Ackerson, our chairman's car. He is, uh, he yeah. is the uh, top guy at General Motors. This is his car. So we're going to do, some, well, we're going to do something with the boss's car. You want to talk car. about that later, or you want to talk about it now? Now, see, this will make them watch the whole thing, because they want to know how they could get this car. I got it. Now, tell me about this car here. I remember seeing pictures of this when I was a kid. And it's fun to see it uh, in person. Yeah, this is the 59 Stingray Racer, designed by Bill Mitchell and his team. You know, they had done the Corvette SS with Duntov. Right. Two chassis car. And with the same chassis, they developed, same type chassis, they developed this car. Uh, it was developed as a race car, not as a concept vehicle. Right. And uh, ran it for a couple of years, won a national championship with it. Uh, it's got a great history. Uh, this is probably one of the most expensive cars in General Motors collection. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, I, abs I absolutely love this car, yeah. and it has had an influence on every Corvette. Since sure, I mean, one. look at the Corvette influence from yeah. this, from yeah. the uh, from '63, '64 through '67, '68. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at the, this. You see the. Uh, that's my favorite year, those, yeah, those yeah. mid-'60s yeah. cars. The Stingrays. And, and they're the, all influenced from then that. Even the fender shape, and even as we've been developing C7. Right. This car has had an influence on, on that vehicle, but it was developed as a race car. When I took over leadership of design, one of the very first things I did was I said, we got to restore this car. Yeah. This car is one of the crown jewels. Sure. But one thing I wanted to do was keep the interior. It's still the original interior. Yeah, look at that. I can see the holes in the seats. And but you know, things. Dick Thompson was the driver. Uh, Elvis drove this car in clam bake. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's got all this history of yeah. all these people who drove the car. And this I, car would probably be worth north of $10 million if you auctioned it off, I would think. I, 
At least. At least. At, at least. least. Yeah, this at is least. probably the rarest, most valuable Corvette there is. And yeah. it's a thrill to have it here at the garage. Tell me about what we have here. It's just part of the whole brake duct system. Okay, okay. The so car. brake is coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's, that, that's it's got inboard brakes. Right. On oh, it. okay. Uh, yeah, very different system. Yeah. You know, you can see some Jaguar influence. Can we in open the hood the, on this one? Yeah, yes, we can. Let me so this was just sort of sitting in the back room somewhere, huh? Well, you know, it's been driven a lot. Yeah. There have been several different engines in it over the years, and it's really kind of back to its original yeah. state. Yeah. Wow. The engine, uh, early, you know, fuel injection system. And it doesn't look car. 1959 at all. It looks no. like at least 10 years later than yeah. that. Yeah. Look at those headers and then the heat shields here. Yeah, it's a great car. Great car. I've, I've driven it a bit. It's, it's yeah. fun to drive. And, and what are we know. looking at? About 375 horsepower, 400? Uh, Something like that? With what's in it right now, it's around 375. Right, yeah. right. There have been different engines in it from 327 to 377. Right. To, I think even at one point, a big block went in it. I see it's got an it. alternator on it now as opposed yeah. to the generator. Yeah. You can see this long spline for the Yeah, the and look fan. at the frame. Look, at, yeah. it's not uh, any Corvette frame I've ever no, seen. No, no, it's all tube frame. Very cool. Through that. And this has got to be one of the most expensive pieces of fiberglass you can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a fun project. The restoration, the guys just loved working on it. Now it's got very wheels. thin uh, yeah. fiberglass. The big lake pipes out the side. They yep. still call them lake pipes? I guess they do. I guess so. Lake pipes, of course, comes from the, the dry lakes when guys would cap their exhausts with the street and then you'd open mm. those up. But those are just side pipes. I guess those yep. wouldn't be lake pipes. Halibrand wheels. Halibrand yeah. wheels, yeah. yeah. Are those, those aren't, now those are probably, the Halibrand wheels are magnesium, right? Well, these are. Oh, these are magnesium? Yeah, just oh. polished. Just Whoa, polished. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this was, I mean, the first usage of the name Stingray. Oh, is that right? And Every line, every surface was influenced by that underwater fish. Yeah. You know, the whole shapes here. Right. The whole, you know, uh, sections through it are all came from that. But it looks thing. like a 66 Corvette that somebody yeah. customized, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's really kind of cool. Does the back open up? Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay, there you are. I mean, the car was designed as a race car, right. not as a concept vehicle. And I guess as a racer, you had to carry a spare. You had to have you? a spare. That was part of the rules. Right, right. I mentioned earlier the inboard brakes. Oh, yeah, look at that. Inboard yeah. brakes. The only Corvette ever to have those, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah. it's a four speed, obviously. Yeah. Muncie, box. Yeah. You want to, why don't you start it up? Oh, I'd love to start yeah. it up. Let's, yeah, bring, let's put this back down. You got to hear this car. I wish it was a case if you, you broke it, you bought it, but they won't sell it to me. <laughs> oh, you have to remove the wheel. Oh, you got to pull the wheel out? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Fuel pump. Wow. Talk about a piece of history. The men were men and the women were glad of it. Yes, sir, Bob. Wooden ships, iron men. These were the days. <laughs> Fat boy, what a fantastic car. Steering wheel comes off like that. But you know, I remember as a kid being seven, eight, nine years old, and this car was just everywhere. Wow. Did this race in Europe? Uh, no. No, it, it ran in. Uh... Sports car racing here in the States, Watkins Glen, right. Elkhart Lake, tracks like that. Cool. Yeah. Dick Thompson was the driver. Yeah. Thing was, when they were developing it, they ran out of time. And they wanted to do the coupe. Yeah, you know, oh, full coupe. coupe up right, road, right. But they ran out of time, so they said, you know, Mitchell just said, well, just cut the roof off and let's keep it lean. And, yeah. And I'm glad it, they did it this way. Now, there's an iconic Corvette. This is the one, yeah. the 63. Yeah. Now, are those wheels correct for 63? Yeah. Yeah, they were available. It seems like uh, they, they became more popular the year after that. Because I always remember seeing these with hubcaps. Yeah. And most of them had the hubcaps. Right, right. I mean, today most of them. Well, you know, with these wheels, what a lot of people don't tell you, I remember reading a handbook once. It said every 100 miles you had to knock those wheels. Hmm. 
But so many came off, the factory kind of said, no, nah, it became kind of a problem because guys didn't take care of them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that wheel. Well, the, the final year for this generation car, the knockoffs were gone. Right, right, yeah. 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 67. And of course. But this the, is identical to the very first one that I saw. I remember as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Seeing yeah. it in the dealership. And, just, and of course, yeah. I always like to split window. And th there's a story. Do you know what it is? I can't remember why it, why it had this split window. And then... Because uh, Bill Mitchell wanted it. Yeah, Bill Mitchell I mean, wanted it. it's that simple. <laughs> I mean, it's just, when you look at a stingray, the fish, that whole spline down the right. center of it, and that's what the whole influence was. Uh, it was something the, you know, there were European cars that did it as well, but uh, Mitchell insisted on it, and Duntoff didn't want it. Yeah, Duntoff did not want way. this one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And Duntoff, is by '64, it was it's gone. gone. He said, "Yeah," because I knew a guy who who had a '63. Yeah. And he spent a fortune cutting this out yeah. and, and fitting a '64 <laughs> window in, so it would look better. A lot of people did. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, of course, and this is the one everyone wants now. Yeah. It just has a more European. Uh, yeah feel to it yeah I, that's I, right yeah i love the car it's and of course and this is the top of the line for 63 knockoff wheels fuel injection 375 yeah. horsepower oh i always love this car well i even love the way the door opened into the roof you know that was yeah the way the door opened into the roof and yeah. the little things the radio going this way instead of going this way yeah. i don't know yeah. why when you're a kid you're, oh look at that the radio goes this way <laughs> instead of this way you know, just, just yeah. one of those it didn't deals. take much to entertain and obviously kids. this looks like a Survivor car too. The interior looks all original. Yeah. And the speedometer went to 150. And can we see that Rochester fuel injection unit? Let's take a look here. Oh, let's see. There you go. Yeah. I always liked the Fuley Corvette even more than the big block because I thought it was a better handling car. And that was the Rochester unit that's so well, mystified. Well, in particular in the early days when the big block with yeah. cast iron. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. It was pretty heavy. But I would always remember mechanics being mystified by these. It was just, it was not something Clem at the Shell Station could adjust or work on, yeah. you know. But 375 horse, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, it is a great car. And that was a lot of horsepower back in the day. Even yeah. Lamborghini was only 360 when it came out. I mean, this is the right package. It's oh, yeah. Injected small block. Yeah, yeah. Corvette, just terrific car. Very nice car. And with white wall tires, which is kind of fun. You don't really see white walls on. Oh, and the other thing, hidden headlamps. Oh, the hidden headlamps, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was 1963. Yeah, that was unbelievable. The, head the headlamps flipped oh, over, yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. That was big so much deal. of the stuff we take for granted now in cars, you know? <laughs> and let's go back to the 58 here. Now, if you're watching this video, you will get a chance to own this particular car. We're not giving it away. But the boss, the big boss man, uh, although he loves this Corvette, what is the charity he is? Uh, it's for Habitat. Habitat yeah. for Humanity? Yeah, okay. Habitat for Humanity in Detroit. In Detroit, he's okay. Been, he's really, really been dedicated to that project. So yeah. he's given up this car. This car will be at the Barrett-Jackson auction in January in Arizona. So if you'd like to take a car away from the head of General Motors, from the, <laughs> from the top guy himself, if you want to get his car, you know, I, know I, I want the car the head of General Motors drives. That's the one that here's your chance to bid on it. And of course, all the money will go to, uh, to charity. So that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, he, he absolutely loves this car, but he's so dedicated to that charity that yeah. he's willing to. Well, that's really wonderful. That's really yeah. wonderful. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's got a history. It's owned by the president of, is, is it president or CEO? What is his official title? Well, he's the CEO. The CEO. He's the, he's the chairman. Chairman, chairman of General Motors. Mm -hmm. So very cool. Yeah. And it's a hard top car, and it's got two four barrels on it, so it's got yeah. uh, all the cool options. I think you ought to, are the keys in it? Are the keys in it? What's cooler than stealing the boss's car? Come on, let's steal the, the boss's it, car. Jay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Dan, we're taking your car. How many guys get to take the boss's car when he's not looking? See what two four barrels sound like. Oh, very nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. We're gonna take the boss's car out, take it for a spin, and uh, maybe one of you will be lucky enough to bend on it and get it. See you next week. Ed, thank you, my friend. Okay.
Thank you. It's great, Jay.